Um, today I'm going to do a demo of Bruno. Um, so uh, I'm going to start with a code repository here. Uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to get clone this repository to my system, and I'm going to I'm going to get that up and running, and then we'll actually play with the APIs using Bruno, right? So I have this uh, repository on GitHub. Uh, I did this when I was interviewing at Gumroad, um, and this was in uh, 2021 on September. So I already have that um, loaded and you know the app is up and running. Now I'd like to interact with this API, right? Um, and I have actually, you know, uh, this is a project that I did uh, almost you know, uh, a year back and I have no clue on you know, what are the APIs that. So I'm gonna go and <coughs> quickly look into the, uh, into the router and I clearly see that, okay, these are the um, routes that are available. And this is kind of the classic problem with every um, onboarding, right? You, de a developer clones a repository. Uh, the readme contains um, information on how to get the app up and running, but <coughs> there's no, there's no, you know, there's no collection that a developer can, you know, uh, start using the API. So in this case, we're going to create a collection. Uh, I'm going to create a collection. I'm going to give this as, you know, this is called a slick API. I'm going to give the folder name as collections. And this is, Bruno is different from any API client out there like Postman or Insomnia, right? The collections are stored on your file system and I'll show you in this demo. So it's gonna ask us where do we want to save this collection, right? So I'm gonna browse my folder and I already have, you know, in GitHub, I already have um, the repository here. I'm gonna save this, this collection in this repository. Now, this may sound, you know, totally, uh, why are we saving collections in, in repository? But I'll come to explaining why, why, why we do that, right? So I created the collection and let's actually start uh, you know, creating some requests. I'm gonna say, you know, let's actually get all the products there. And we have, this is the API. <coughs> so I copy this API here. Um, I'm gonna you know, start with a base URL. We'll make this an environment variable. Um, okay, I create that. Come here now. This uh, you know, I'm going to create an environment variable. Um, so there's no environment in this collection. So I'm going to create an environment. <coughs> Sorry, I'm going to call it as local. And in this, I'm going to add a variable base URL. I'm going to say that that's HTTP. Um, Localhost um, 9000. Right. Save that. That's good. I'm gonna switch the environment to local, and now I have this in green, and let's actually make the call. Okay, so there we have it, and I'm gonna make one more. I'm gonna get a product. So I'm gonna um, clone that, call it get a product, and I'm gonna get the first product, and we have there. This is the product, and this is the ratings, and I can also, um, you know, uh, create a poster rating, right? So I'm going to, um, I'm gonna clone this, I'm gonna say that um, add product rating, this is another request. Um, this is a post request, and this is in the slash ratings. And um, the body is gonna be JSON, and I have no clue on what the body is. So I'm gonna to go to the, um, here, and I, I see that it accepts rating and review, right? These are the two things that it expects. Um, so I'm gonna go here, create a, um, Create a JSON. Let's rate this as five. And I'm gonna put the review as, um, you know, one of the best books <coughs> ever, right? Okay, there we have it. Um, sorry, um, right, there we have it. Let's go and just make sure that we had here one, two, and three rating. And I'm gonna add a rating here, right? Um, I'm missing something. What is the endpoint? <coughs> it's rating, not ratings. So, <coughs> all right, I click that. And okay, we have a 200 response. And if I go back to my product, and if I actually click this, there we have our, you know, the rating that we just added come up, right? Okay, cool. So this is, um, now, where is this collection actually saved, right? If you remember at the beginning of the demo, I showed you that, you know, it's gonna save in the, in the um, in the repository itself, and we created the folder here is called as collections. 
you can call this whatever, you know, uh, you can call it API hyphen examples or just examples or anything. So I just call it as collections. And here is where, for example, if you look at the get products, get product, and all these three requests are actually here. So when we added a product rating, uh, this is the base URL, this is the, you know, this is the URL, this is the body mode, this is the HTTP method, and this is the body that we have, right? So this is what is different um, or revolutionary about Bruno over every API client out there. It saves it in a markup language. We, this is the uh, you know dot brew, the brew markup language, and uh, it saves your API requests in a way that's <coughs> human readable, right? And now what I can do is that I can actually commit these changes, right? I'm gonna add these changes. I'm gonna say that um, API collection. Right, can you um, commit and push this code? <coughs> okay, now what we just did now, why is this important? And I would say if anybody, uh, any developers are looking at this demo, they would be like, you don't want to save collections in your code, right? So um, let me get to that, right? So this is typical developers, right? I don't want to save collections in my code. <laughs> And if you look, if you look why that is the case, this is just PTSD from the giant JSON collection format of Postman and similar tools. You, all these existing tools, they save their collection as big JSONs. And no developer wants to put something that looks like a zip file or an artifact into your code. You only want to put things in the code which are versioned, right? Which can be diffed using pull request, which can be managed using something like get right and this is this is the reason why developers don't you know they don't want to save collections in code now <clears throat> let me ask you know if, if you think okay what are actually collections right collections are living examples of how to use your api now if you if you just come back here this is a living example of this service this product service and what are the apis and and what are the examples of how to use the API? So they are living examples of how to use your API. And here comes the important question. Where should they live? In your source code repository. And I know that this is contrarian. This is not how development is done. But we have, till date, for a decade, developers have never saved their collections in the code because they look ugly giant JSON blobs, right? And what I'm trying to do with Bruno is change that, right? Because this is not an ugly JSON blob. This is something that you can actually diff using, you know, if, if somebody wants to raise a pull request. This is readable, right? And it is very important. I strongly believe that it's it, your collections should remain in your code because they are living examples of how to use your API. Now, I'll again, you know, I'll say that again. Ideally, what we want in any company or any any code repository is, you know, a developer should be able to, you know, clone that code repository, get it up and running by going through a readme. And the next thing that most developers do is they go to a Slack channel and ask, hey, can someone share the Postman collection for it or Insomnia collection for it, right? And you never, you know, it's, these collections are all fragmented in Slack channels, right? What we want to do with Bruno is that they can, you know, they clone the repository and they can bring this collections up in Bruno and directly use it without asking, you know, asking people to share that collection. And we don't want to hear horror stories that, you know, Tim had the collections for the payment API service, but he left the company last month. And I've seen this happen many times in enterprise companies, right? There is a legacy code base. Nobody knows, you know, nobody wants to maintain it. And uh, a new hire comes in, uh, clones a legacy code base. And the people who maintain that code base are not there. And they took the collections with them. There's no central place where they have put. And it's it's a nightmare, right? And And this is why it's, I strongly believe that, you know, your collections should be, uh, stored in your repository because they are living examples of how to use your API. Now, <clears throat> the you know when I speak when I uh, tell this to developers, the question that I get is, doesn't Swagger solve this? 
right? I am not going to answer that question for you. Why Swagger is not solving this? I'm just going to pose a, the question back. Why do you use Postman's or similar tools then when Swagger is there? Why do you use it? And I'm sure that you'll find that answer for yourself, right? <clears throat> what this also means is that your pull requests can be diffed easily, right? And you don't need to use a third-party proprietary version control, right? You already have Git, and why bring another version control to manage your collections? And I know this demo is getting too long, but I'm going to show you a quick demo of that too, right? So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to bring a terminal up, and I'll show you how, how I believe that the pull request process would look like in Bruno, right? Um, so just give me a moment. Okay, so I'm going to just check uh, a branch. I'm going to call it as feature um, update collections, right? This is my feature branch. Um, get check out minus B for a new branch. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to come here and <clears throat> let's say that this um, this uh, get products, right? Which is, has a name description and now we have a post request, right? I'm just going to copy this JSON here. And I'm going to clone this. I'm going to call it as create product, right? Clone that, um, come to create product. I'm going to make a post request. I'm going to go to the body. I'm going to say that the body is a JSON. I'm going to paste this JSON here. It, of course, won't have an ID. It has a name, it has a description, it has a price, it has an image URL, right? This API is not there in, the, so in this code, but uh, assume that you, know, you had a uh, API written for this. And um, yep, so this is the API, and I'm going to go to VS Code, and I see that in my diff there is a um, <clears throat> there is this new uh, collection that's a uh, new request that's added called create product true, and if you look at this, you can see what is the change that was made, right? What is the author trying to do here? He's creating a request with with the name create product, a post request. This is the URL. It's a HTTP request They're using a JSON. Uh, the sequence is actually representing the sequence of where you are. this is coming. Uh, it's for some reason coming here as one is a bug. I need to fix it. And they have the body here, which is a JSON. And then whatever body you had put, uh, that shows up here. And I see that this is, you know, annotation is bad. I'm going to actually fix that. I'm going to do that. Um, save that. Uh, come back here. And that's fixed. And I'm going to um, commit this, right? I'm going to say that uh, I have added the changes. I'm going to say that I'm going to say feed. I'm going to say updated um, collection example, right? And I'm going to commit and push this uh, feature branch, right? Okay, there you <coughs> there you have it. Let's go to um, GitHub. And I'm going to, you know, there is this new branch. I'm going to create a pull request. And, uh, you know, just I'm going to leave it right now empty. The description, I'm going to create a pull request. And as, you know, as teams, when when you get this, uh, the pull request, and when you go and look at the files changed, you can clearly see that there was a new request created. And, you know, this is the contents of this. This is differable. Right? You can understand what's happening. This is no longer a big, giant, JSON, ugly blob, like how Postman does it. And <coughs> this is diffable, and you, know, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can review it just like how you would review any piece of code. So I hope you like this demo. Um, so Bruno is an open source project. Um, you know, just been working on it for almost a year now. Um, so let me know uh, if you have any feedback or any any comments. I welcome all comments as well as rebuttals on why this paradigm is, is, is wrong, right? Um, all right, I think that is all for the demo. Uh, uh, thank you for taking time to watch this demo. I appreciate it. Thanks everyone.